listening to The Savvy Musician Show with Leah McHenry, and this is your secret weapon for success in the new music industry. Welcome to The Savvy Musician Show, the premier music marketing podcast. This is CJ Ortiz. I'm the mindset and branding and friend of Leah and co-host of this show. <laughs> Uh, all of those things for SMA. We all wear several hats, um, but joined once again by her eminence, Miss Awesomeness. Leah, how you doing? I'm doing just great. Drinking my coffee here, getting a second wind. <laughs> That's right. We batch record these. We try to get as many of them knocked out as we can when we do these together. And uh, we have some great chats. We just had one. So uh, we're maintaining energy for uh, That's right. for these podcasts but hope everybody's getting great value out of them and uh, again please we encourage you to leave a review uh, for us pick your favorite player click some stars if that's what they offer and write mm-hmm. a review helps other people to find it and we read each and every one of them we share them in fact in our team meetings so if you want to inspire and motivate us that's how you do it as i always say being a motivational speaker myself you want to know how to motivate a motivator Tell him or her how much they motivate you. So Mm -hmm. we'd love to hear from you. Before we get started into today's episode, I want to share just a student spotlight. Um, This is from one of our elite members, Noe Venable, and she writes, hashtag win. I'm prepped and ready for my first harp pro photo shoot tomorrow. By that, she means harp. They play the instrument, the harp. She says, what amazes me is how great I feel going into this one. Like, I know who I am artistically. I know what I want the photos to look and feel like. I've got my playlist ready. I'm ready to rock the photo shoot like I would rock a show. This would not have been the case a year ago before I started with SMA. I totally credit the course for holding space for me to dial in the look and feel of my brand so that I feel as good about that as I do about my music. Wish me luck, everyone, and thank you, SMA. X O X O X O. Those are your X O's, I think, Leah. Oh. <laughs> I usually sign off with X's and O's. <laughs> That's a great testimony, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, seeing so much progress from her in our group. And yeah, I love it. It's what keeps me doing all of this. It's people who take what I've put in the curriculum and they run with it. Yeah. It's just like, okay, I just need to know enough that I can go out there into the universe and do my thing. And all I needed was just the system, this process. I needed the confidence. I needed the mindset check. I needed the strategy and they just run with it. And that's, that's, it makes me really proud. Yeah. I mean, I, without spending too much time talking about her, but she is a great example, um, a more contemporary one for us because I'm, I observed the same things that you do, Leah, about her and what she's doing. I mentioned her even the other day in our coaching group. I said, you know, one thing I appreciate about you, Noah, is that you, you're you willing to get your hands dirty yep. and learn these things. But one of the things that's interesting about her in specific as it relates to today's episode, Leah, is that she had a lot of questions and a lot to overcome in relation to who she was allowing into her Facebook group that she attached to her Facebook music business page because, you know, she was opening the door to this whole new population of people and all of these new fans are coming in. And there's some people who maybe were not a great fit and she really wanted to protect the culture. And so it brings up the question, um, which she overcame all of that and applied Mm -hmm. the principles that, that you taught But um, it does bring up the point about because, Leah, so much of this is a social media thing, and I try to tell the students that, is that the battle you have to win every day is the battle of the newsfeed because that's where people meet you primarily for the first time. And they start this journey with you, and they go then to your page, and they start following your posts, and they maybe opt in for something, visit your website or something like that. Well, now they're getting to know you. And Mm -hmm. so the dynamic of social media, as you know, means that we've got to come out from behind the microphone and be more of a messenger and a leader and interact with our fans and all of these things. Well, that can open up. That's a blessing, right? Because you get to now communicate in a way artists never really were able to do in the past. Record labels can't do this. But then there's an other side to this, which is 
having boundaries with fans. Yeah. And I know you've experienced this firsthand, which is this topic really came out of your own personal experience, but um, how do we broach this subject about creating boundaries with fans and drawing the line? Yeah. I mean, I've faced a great deal of this over the years and as we move more and more into an e-commerce type of landscape where this is the norm, it's no longer the exception, shopping online for physical products is more normal. What I've seen happen over the years is people don't email in, they don't call a phone number. What they do is basically post anywhere and everywhere, random places, for example, customer service, questions, problems, whatever. And they expect to be answered immediately. And and so I'm, I'm addressing it from a customer service perspective. There's more to this, but um, it's an easy one because I'm dealing with it still currently. And specifically the fact that I am so accessible and reachable as an artist through social media, especially on Instagram, especially via DMs, I respond to every single DM that I get, either by res- like responding to it or actually writing something back, acknowledging that they wrote something to me, um, saying thank you. Uh, I re- reply to many comments, but I especially reply to DMs. And before Instagram was so popular, it, it was also the same way on Facebook, where uh, before there was different ser- security settings and privacy settings, uh, and before I really made my profile private, um, fans would just contact me and want to chit chat or talk or had questions about their order or whatever, a variety of things. And I quickly realized that, OK, I'm going to have to really make a purposeful decision about what my boundaries are, how I want to run my music business in a way that isn't going to burn me out for one. And that sets some healthy boundaries here. So the first thing I did was I stopped adding fans or potential fans as friends. You know, on your personal profile, you have a limit of 5,000. I can't remember if there was ever a cap on that when Facebook started, but at some point they put a cap on 5,000. And uh, around that time, I realized I need to separate my personal from business. Besides, there's a cap of 5,000, so why would I fill it all up with people who don't even know me? And besides, I'm posting pictures of my cat and my kids and the funny things they said. It's kind of a personal, private thing. It's not for them. So I changed the settings on my profile. I also deleted thousands of people. I want to say like one or 2,000. This was years ago. And made the decision. Okay, I'm going to have a personal page. That's for me, personal profile. I'm going to have a professional page. And that's where I'm going to post all my music stuff. And of course, a lot of people even today use their personal profile for business purposes because they think it gets better reach. And really, I think it's almost the same as a page. Like there are people, I mean, I follow probably thousands of pages and groups and people and there's only so much space in the newsfeed and I only spend so much time on there per day. So I'm only seeing a tiny, tiny fraction of things that I signed up to see. So it's the same thing on a page or anywhere else. So that's the first big thing that I changed was pull the bandaid, rip the bandaid right off. Mm-hmm. Get rid of all the fans that you have accepted on your personal profile. I mean, it's kind of freaky when you think that if you if you, if they're a friend on your profile, they can pretty much have you on speed dial. They can video you, they can call you, they can message you at any time of the day or night. And there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, I think there's ways you can mute people, maybe, but why why do that to yourself? And at any point you start scaling your music business and becoming more successful, this is not gonna, you're you're gonna regret it. (laughs) Right. Really quickly. So that was a smart move for me. Now. Even though I've done that, I still have to set firm boundaries. My biggest challenge right now with the level that I'm at is the customer service part of it where, yeah, you're doing a crowdfunding campaign and people somehow think that if I leave a message, if I tweet something on Twitter that I'm going to get a customer service response, I'm like, I'm I'm not even on Twitter. Like, why are you 
Mm. Why are you asking me about customer service? What the status of your order is on Twitter? That's not customer service. If you even saw my profile, you see I barely am on there. And so people are, their expectations are incredibly high for response on all platforms at all times. So this is a boundary thing even. I wish there was a, a blanket way to address that one issue, but there isn't other than just making it clear, making it known during campaigns, after campaigns and album launches through email and through organic posts that, hey, if you have any questions about your order, send an email here and be specific. Give the email address. That's the only thing that I can recommend that you do. And just do it often and do it uh, even if you think no one needs it because they need to know there's a place to go if I'm having an issue. I bring this up, and sorry, this is a monologue, but uh, or, or a rant, <laughs> one of the two, mm-hmm. it's great. Uh, because I've, I, I really am still dealing, dealing with this. I've had to be very frank and upfront with certain fans that did not respect my boundaries and the fact that I am accessible and that that's a privilege and I don't have to be that accessible. Right. Um, where it was like, you know, the status of an order or something was, you know, something went haywire or whatever. And they're contacting me over and over on like a Saturday during my private weekend time with my family. And they're expecting response right now. And they mm-hmm. and if I don't respond to them, you know, they're getting more upset kind of a thing. And I just, you know, you try to be composed and polite. And I always believe in that. Like, uh, basically put a smile on and just realize, OK, I mean, as an artist, I think. I hate dealing with customer service would probably be like my top things that I don't like doing, but you end up having to do it a little bit. If even if it's just, hey, our business hours are Monday through Friday, nine to five at this email address. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you put on a smile and you say that and you you take care of your fans, even if they are being totally rude, obnoxious, uh, demanding. And, you know, so there's a way to handle it while also setting your boundary and saying, you know, these are the hours we operate that we can get back to you. And this is where you can send in your complaint or concern or question. I hope that helps somebody listening right now, because it can be stressful when people expect such an immediate response from you any time of the day. Yeah. And I'm sure you've encountered that, CJ, with your yeah. metal motivation stuff, too, where just people just assume because you're online, because it's the Internet, uh, you're awake 24 hours a day and you, you never go to sleep and you should get an answer right now. That's right. Yeah, I had a guy um, just recently who was like, it's so funny because he was just mad about um, an item that wasn't included. He had ordered a, like a shirt, a hat, and then a phone case. Now, of course, as you know, Leah, these are different vendors providing these. So he got the first two items, mm-hmm. fine, you know, but the phone case was delayed. And so he was very upset about it. And so he's just hitting me up on all of these things. And Finishing with the line, which I haven't heard since the 80s, it was, I'm going to call my lawyer <laughs> oh. and, and the Better Business Bureau. I'm like, oh, really? You, oh. Do, you, do you honestly think that matters? <laughs> so I, <laughs> I had written him back and I told him, you know, all the little idiosyncrasies of all of this. And, and I said, at the end, I said, but listen, hey, you know, I mean, you're still welcome to call your lawyer. You're still welcome to <laughs> report to the Better Business Bureau because I know you don't really mean that. But what it shows you is that when when you're hearing from these people, it's primarily emotion. It's it's that's they don't know how to deal. It's like people who have to communicate every emotion they have on Facebook. Right. Mm -hmm. So they go off and they just, you know, whatever they're feeling, they have. You don't Mm -hmm. have to do that. (laughs) Just as a note, you don't have to go online and express your feelings. Um, But the thing about it is that that is primarily what people are doing doing is they are venting yes and so if they know that you know they can possibly upset your apple cart or embarrass you or whatever then they're going to do that if you don't have something in place that Mm -hmm. you know directs them and so if anybody's observant of a lot of the stuff your emails or your sales pages or your whatever there's a lot of there's a lot of content in there telling people fulfillment time for orders and yes. here's who to call and you know that sort of thing. That's another proactive thing that can really help as far as reducing the need for them to to bother you 
and and um, cross that boundary of contacting you whenever they want to is setting expectations as often and frequently as possible, especially when you're dealing with the e-commerce side of things. So like you said, on product descriptions, I'm very transparent about shipping times, order processing times. Hey, your items may arrive separately. Okay, we put that in the product description. We'll put it in a receipt email. We'll put it up in in a follow-up email. And yet people still don't read it. (laughs) They don't compute or, you know, somehow they're not even seeing it. But it does reduce the number of complaints for sure. And if you just as upfront and put it in as many places as you know, they're always going to open a receipt email. So if there's anything really important that you need them to know, like where to contact, like what email to use, um, yeah, anything like order times or or processing, shipping times, if items are going to arrive separately, that is a fantastic place to put it because you always open a receipt item, make sure that you got what you ordered. There's a couple other really good things. Oh, I mean, I recently encountered uh, an issue Here's just another thing, and this has to do with boundaries, but but um, also problem solving in the customer service area where somebody, uh, a fan, it might have even been the same one, uh, was, you know, really upset about something. It was kind of like a, a delayed thing, like I got this thing, but I didn't get that thing. Um, and of course, we're always looking to improve what we're doing on our end. So I never automatically like blame the person. I go first, like, oh, did we screw up on something? Let's check. And if we did, we make it right. And if not, and if it ends up like the person missed something, it's like, okay, well, clearly we can communicate better. It's, I still t- try to take ownership. So anyway, this person wanted to get on the phone. Um, I do have like a customer service phone number and you can get that through different customer service apps and stuff. So it's not, they're not calling like a phone. It's like a, it's connected to our ticketing service that we have. Um, anyway, but he ended up calling the wrong number. It was a, a number we had actually for SMA on a receipt through Stripe, which is a payment processor. Right. And because at the time when I set up the account originally, I didn't have my ex cathedra phone number. So I just, ha- but they had, you had to put something in there. So I put in the SMA phone number. So he's like calling SMA mm. and uh, trying to get, you know, he ended up talking to one of our people and it all get, ended up working out. They're like, yeah, no, that's his uh, SMA. And, but anyways, but he was like, I'm so confused and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, all that to say is that that was preventable if I had thought through the fact that where where is somebody looking to find that contact information? He went to a, a different, it wasn't actually a Shopify receipt. It was a, a payment processor receipt. And if I had turned it off, because they actually don't need two of them. If I had turned that off, that would have solved the problem. He would have gone to our website to get the phone number. Instead, he went to the receipt he had with a different phone number. So again, that problem was preventable if I had do, done my due diligence and like sifted through those details. But because we didn't and I didn't catch it, um, you know, I got a whole bunch of extra messages about it. So the whole moral of the story is Do what you can to think through, put yourself in the shoes of a fan who's buying something from you. Did you make it clear where they can go if they have an issue or a problem or a question? Give them a specific email address that you want them to use. This will go for if I see something on social media, most of the time I'm saying, hey, please email our support and I'll tell them what it is. It takes an extra 10 seconds for me to type it, put yourself in the shoes, go through the process. And then if someone is messaging you, emailing you, just tell them what your business hours are. So that means, hey, set some hours. Like, yeah, you're not gonna hear from us on a Saturday at midnight. Uh, No, Uh, we even have to set that expectation for customers in SMA and you're dealing with people in different time zones where they're, they can be quite demanding and rude thinking, uh, I should be getting response immediately because I'm a customer. It's like, well, we have staff with business hours because they're allowed to have time off and have a weekend with their family. Mm. And, um, you know, so you're having to set boundaries. I mean, this is just part of business is setting those boundaries. And if you do get a fan who is disrespectful, rude, um, not respecting that, I think it's okay to be forward and frank with them and saying just that that that's not uh, acceptable and please email. And if they just at the end of the day will not respect you, 
you might have to go as far as deleting them, blocking them, doing what you have to do. Yeah. It's a last resort, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, it I happens. Think, yeah, it, it certainly does. And I think it, it extends into the other area where you have to have the boundaries, which is just in the basic interaction with fans on social media because – you know, they want to be, they want to be acknowledged, which is important. You know, you mentioned that you answer all your DMs and I'm sure that if people comment, you do your best to answer or respond to their comments and what have you. I think you can get with artists oftentimes is that fear of rejection, that f- fear of judgment. They don't want people to not like them. <laughs> Obviously they're doing what they can on yeah. social media to get their following and all of that. So the last thing they want to do is upset someone so what that ends up doing is you start placating these people, placating these fans, and suddenly then fans are starting to comment on everything and doing everything to, and just they'll take up your whole day with yeah. just a conversation over something. They'll and, use it as an excuse to just chit chat with you, really, if you're that reachable. Yeah, and I'll, I'll get that with people who will private message me on my own profile, or they'll you know, try to direct message me on the page or, you know, what have you. And so you have to take things one by one. But I think what's most important is the change that needs to happen in the artists themselves. To be strong, to learn to be firm, to know that just because this one person is difficult to deal with is not a reflection on you. It's them. (laughs) It's -hmm. an issue they have. And it's okay for you to establish these boundaries And they can be very public. Those boundaries can be very public in just the way that you answer. In other words, don't answer. Learn how to answer in a way that doesn't create an open loop. Yes. You know, just because they say, hey, how are you? Have a great day. Don't answer back by saying, my day is great. Tell me what you did. (laughs) You know, Yeah. Keep this loop going. Yep. Write everything in a way that tries to close a conversation while being polite. Yeah, that's really good. That's a really good tip, actually, because, yeah, the way you answer somebody could just keep it going and going. If you you answer somebody with a question, well, yeah, you might just get sucked in for the next hour or two. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think you knowing, especially if you're in DMs and stuff, if people say something, just say thank you Mm -hmm. means a lot or something like that and move on. And it's just like a statement. I answer a lot of things with statements. And very rarely will I kind of open the loop for more conversation, even though if someone continues, I, I'll acknowledge them um, by double tapping their their message, sending them a little heart back or something saying, like, I saw you, I acknowledge you. It does something for their dopamine loop, actually, right. if you acknowledge somebody. So I, I read somewhere that on social media anyways, and the reason why we're all addicted to social media is because of dopamine and it's this little pleasure chemical in your brain. So when you get these little dings and notifications, when you open it up and see there's somebody message you, it makes you, it's, there's a little, there's a little sensor in your brain saying I'm important, you know? And so when someone leaves a message or a comment or a DM with you and you acknowledge them back, especially if you comment back, it actually closes that dopamine loop and it's not closed unless it's acknowledged. Uh, so, if you can do that, it will keep them coming back and keep them very loyal. Uh, so there's a good reason to respond to people. I am lucky in that I haven't had any anything too weird going on as far as like weird stalkers or anything. I haven't had much of that. Right. But it happens as well. So other there's other safety things you want to keep in mind in terms of boundaries like don't put your phone number somewhere on the internet. Don't put your address mm-hmm. somewhere on the internet. If you're using an email service provider, use a PO box because you have right. to, by law, display an address. Uh, use a PO box. Don't, yeah, don't put your personal email. I think I said that already. And it may be useful if you do get a lot of questions about orders and products and stuff like that. It may be useful to, like, in your Instagram bio to say what your business hours are, where they can find out more information if they have questions. And send them to your website, to a contact form with specifics of, hey, are my business hours or our business hours are between Monday and Friday, noon to four or something. So they have expectation of when they could hear back from you on something. 
just doing those few things can really cut down on people bombarding you inappropriately or just taking advantage of the fact that you are online and you're accessible and reachable. Yeah. I mean, I I talk a lot about, I'll use the example of defensive driving, which is, you know, when people take a course and drive, they'll often take the course defensive driving. Why would you take defensive driving? Because you're out there with a, with other people who are behind the wheel of a 10,000 pound piece of steel. <laughs> so, you know, you want to be, you want to be on the defensive because they're going to make bad decisions. They're not going to be paying attention or whatever, but sometimes it comes down to the way your fans perceive you because of social media. So for example, yeah. I get, because of the motivational thing, I get people asking me, what's your remedy for post-traumatic stress disorder? And I'm like, you're asking a guy who calls himself the metal motivator on Facebook to answer the PTSD question? Or the people with, I mean, serious therapeutic psychiatric issues, and they're talking to me about it. And I said, listen, guys, I'm just a motivational speaker. Why? I'm talking to, or I'll say something like, um, you know, I said one day, attitude determines how long it takes to, quote unquote, get over it. Mm. Right? So someone went off about that. Uh, because well, what about this and this? I mean, some horror story. And I'm like, you have to understand that if I get on here and I start talking about, for example, budgeting finances, I'm obviously not talking to an audience in the third world. So don't bring them up. You know, right, I can't die right. the death of a thousand qualifications. But because you're out there and you're this accessible, people perceive you a certain way. And so they're just going to message you. So I had a guy message me a couple of days ago. He DM me on uh Instagram and he said all he said was I don't know who he is there's not even a, a, a his face it was some other just image for his profile picture but he just said I need some advice hmm. that's it he didn't <laughs> say what he needed advice nothing so I just wrote back don't marry her yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's like you determine my re your approach determines my response. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So if you're going to come at me like that, it's just like, hey, and you, it, it might be a serious thing going on on his end. But if, if you're going to approach me like that, you're going to know firsthand. I'm not saying everybody needs to do it my way, but I'm just saying once you've done this for a long time, I want you. That's my point is that you're going to get used to that. You're, you're going to get tough skin. You're not going to feel so bad about everybody's feelings that you were a little too, you know, short with them or yeah. you had to be more direct. And you don't worry about that. It's going to be rough getting started, but do it because it's going to save you a ton of heartache down the road. So some of the things that Leah said, having these things completely spelled out on your sales pages and your, you know, your, your, what numbers you feature, don't feature your personal stuff. But again, that first line of defense is going to be when you are literally interacting with with people and yes. know that you're protecting your empire. Absolutely. I And I wanted to also bring up on, on the topic of boundaries and dealing with customer service as part of growing your empire. And you may be a one man band and you're dealing with it all yourself, or maybe you handle it uh, as a as a band, or maybe you are designating the customer service part of it to a spouse or a part-time person eventually. Uh, I just want you guys to all know that I, too, get extremely rude messages from fans from time to time. I have a couple of examples sitting here in front of me I had to pull up. And he, this is a post. Here's a post. I, I, I put a screenshot in our elite group and I said, this is back from August. I said, let's keep it real, folks. Today I hit $50,000 in pre-orders. What, what people don't see is that I also get to deal with lovely messages like these. It just comes with the territory I send a lot of emails during a campaign. This poor fellow wants out of the car, so we'll let him out. But mm -hmm. so, so this is somebody who was really upset. I was still sending emails and uh, didn't just unsubscribe. They they want you to unsubscribe them. Like they're mm -hmm. so upset that I'm not even going to unsubscribe myself. I'm going to make you do it. And I'm <laughs> going to tell you how upset I am. And right. so that this person said, I want to unsubscribe. I've done it, but I still get messages. And then in all caps, all caps. So now he's yelling, I don't effing care about F off <laughs> with lots of with lots of ex exclamation marks and lots of all caps that I mean, it made me laugh. I, I said, oh, um, let me let me tell you what my response was, because I think uh, it's a good thing. Oh, so I posted my response to him in a screenshot. 
And I said, I'm so sorry the unsubscribe button didn't work for you. I'll have my team take care of it. Lots of love, Leah. And this, you might think, well, why don't you just tell them to F off back or something? It's like, because you ha- when you're in business and you're starting to make money, you have to take the higher road. You need to tell people that you are heard. And like you said, they're just venting and they they want attention mm-hmm. and they, they, they're they looking for a certain response. They're trying to upset you. I mean, this guy right. is yelling at me in all caps. I really want to unsubscribe, but I'm still getting messages I don't care about, you know, F you and all that. He's trying to get a rise out of me and I'm not going to give it to him. I'm going to be polite. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what? what's that uh, that saying about heaping hot coals on someone's head? How's that go? By doing something good for them, you're heaping hot coals on their head, which we would say would be like pouring water on their fire. It's basically the same sort of effect. You, you neutralize their, yeah. their by angst. being By being kind and polite and professional back to him, I am virtually complete disarming him, taking away all his ammunition. Mm. And uh, another person uh, a little more recently, <laughs> actually, I thought this was quite funny. <laughs> they they're they're they were begging me to unsubscribe them she said for her own sanity basically she was saying i am i'm getting anxiety because your subject lines are so compelling i have to open your emails and i can't stop myself from opening your emails and it's causing me anxiety because you use subject lines like we need to talk or i have some bad news things like that 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 uh Basically, I'm doing a really good job marketing and she can't stop opening my emails and it's causing her. And I got a whole email about it. And I I really need you to unsubscribe me, even though my unsubscribe button is in the footer. I thought that was hilarious. I sent it to uh, my marketing manager and he's like, he just totally chuckled. He's like, "Uh, that means you're doing it right. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like if someone can't help but open them. But it's just just so you know, this comes with the territory, you guys, and you need to step it up. Be professional. Don't give them what they're looking for. Heap you know, coals on their head or pour water on their fire. Mm-hmm. You are going to maintain your dignity, retain your respect for yourself. You reply with a polite and kind answer. And just keep in mind, because people screenshot stuff and post them in forums and do weird things like that, too. What you write and how you respond to people, it kind of lasts forever. So I also think it's a good thing to keep in mind, like to maintain that professional posture at all times. So you can never be accused of anything crazy or weird. You can always say, and this actually happened some other, you know, a couple of years back, I think some, some guy, I think when I launched a crowdfunding campaign, some, some person, I think this was last year was like, oh, I, uh, something about the way I treat my fans. I'm like, What? On earth are you talking about the way I treat my fans? I like go the extra mile to treat my fans like as good as I possibly could without inviting them to my house. Like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I remember talking to you about something or other and just incredibly accusatory of something. I don't know what he was talking about. And he said, mentioned something about how I had responded to him. So I went back into my messages. I actually looked him up in Facebook Messenger on my page found the conversation, screenshotted it, sent him back to me, said, oh, you mean this conversation? And I had made, I was, he, I don't know, he was going on about something, upset about something, and I maintained my posture, I maintained my politeness, I even offered to go the extra mile for him in that conversation. I was actually really proud of my response, and he said, oh, okay, I guess I was wrong, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, he made a big stink about it and he yeah. was really vocal about it. And then as soon as I had the proof to show him, hey, uh, actually, I was really kind to you. He pretty much went away with his tail between his legs. Yeah. And that's why you want to maintain that. You have to take the higher road and just know that people you are going to get rude fans. It's kind of crazy to think it's like, I'm just I'm just making music, people like seriously. But yeah. they're out there. Yeah. If you're not a skilled debater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's better to certainly better to take the high road. There'll be occasions where I will just because Well, you're on you know. a different level there. <laughs> you you do it for amusement, but Yeah, I do it for fun. Um but it's like shooting fish in a barrel because I was debating on forums and things long before social media ever began. So for them it's something new. For me it's a, it's experience. But sometimes 
it's just like it, they catch you on that kind of day. But yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, I think, you know, you always want to take the high road. I mean, I would never do anything mean to somebody. You know, I would just. Yeah. I would. I would. It, it would actually it would lead more to their embarrassment just because they're not necessarily prepared for that type of yeah. exchange, you know. Yeah. And, you know, but other than that, you know, there's never a reason to be, you know, rude or name calling or anything like that. But again, if you're dealing with a fan, um, somebody who's, you know, who's who wants to spend money with you and that sort of stuff, that's a yeah, that's a business. Now you're business type. Well, and that's why I handle it the way I do, because it's not like. I'm just an artist out there with not and I'm not selling anything and I'm just like this is personal interaction. No, I treat it like a business. I try to treat every interaction as though this is this is life or death for my business. And customer service is a huge huge part of success for any business. One thing I learned is like if uh let's say there's two identical products out there, the one that has amazing customer service, people will We'll leave the other one and just go to the one with custom, but good customer service because it matters so much more for their experience. In fact, the other product could be superior. Sure. And if you have better customer service, they will leave whatever they they have no loyalty over there. They'll go where they're treated well, where they're feeling respected, they feel heard. And that's why I built SMA with the team that we have. And uh, well, my team has built. I feel like it's very democratic over here. We we've built it together. The systems and processes that we've developed have come out of responding to needs and hearing people and what they need and how they can feel best supported. And that's why I think you know it's it's second to none. Awesome, well, Leah. Thank you. So that's boundaries, guys. Boundaries because uh, you're now in the public space, and that's a part of this wonderful opportunity that we have. Like I said, there's there's another side to all of this, but being proactive in all of these things are great remedies and will go a much, much long way. We're obviously giving specific examples of problematic people. You just know that you're going to get it. Don't take it personally. This is part of you growing as a business owner. So good things are ahead for you. Please do us again a favor and leave a review for this podcast. And uh, we're so excited about what's co- coming for all of you in the new year and uh, so join us online as well leave us some comments and questions some things you'd like for us to cover we'd love to hear from you this episode was sponsored by the super fan system elite program here at savvy musician academy if you are looking to scale your existing music business and you're looking to get into advanced digital marketing such as email marketing funnels e-commerce Facebook ads, and more, and you're looking to build a real profitable online music business, book a call with our team at www.callsma.com. We would love to speak with you for about 30 minutes and see how we can help you. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast for more episodes, and we'll see you next time.